Welcome to Key Tech. Please describe this channel if you're interested in today's video. Due to a rare earth supply shortage in China, ASML's lithography machine production line in the Netherlands was forced to cut deliveries of 15 machines. The replacement magnets urgently produced in the United States were two generations inferior in performance and jittered upon startup. After China imposed export controls on seven categories of medium and heavy rare earth elements in April 2025, the global high-tech industry was immediately thrown into disarray. These seemingly obscure metals control the lifeblood of everything from smartphones to fighter jets. Rare earths are known as industrial vitamins and are particularly indispensable in semiconductor manufacturing. Neodymium iron boron permanent magnets are core components of the precision motion platforms of lithography machines, responsible for maintaining stable positioning at the nanometer level. Heavy rare earth elements, such as terbium and dysprosium, are used in the light source systems of EUV lithography machines. ASML's internal report indicates that its 2025 equipment delivery plan has been forced to adjust. The planned production of 150 advanced lithography machines has been cut by 10%, and mass production of the high NA EUV model has been delayed by at least six months. The US Department of Defense urgently allocated $1.2 billion to support domestic rare earth production, but initial sample testing results have been disappointing. The coercivity parameters of neodymium iron boron magnets produced at a New Mexico factory are 30% lower than those of Chinese products, and the optical platform exhibited noticeable vibration during installation testing. A German precision parts supplier has halted one-third of its production lines. The company, which supplies mirror mount adjustment mechanisms to ASML, has only enough inventory to sustain four weeks of normal production. Its CEO stated that it is considering placing technical employees on unpaid leave. The European Commission held three consecutive emergency meetings to discuss plans for rare earth reserves. Member states are arguing over the location of the warehouse. Poland proposed Warsaw, France insisted on Lyon, and Romania recommended the port of Constanta. Chinese magnetic material companies are experiencing a surge in orders. A listed company in Zhejiang saw its share price rise 40% in three days. After the Shenzhen Stock Exchange issued a letter of concern, the company responded that it had indeed received an unusual number of purchase inquiries from overseas institutions. A rare earth materials company in Shanghai has switched its production lines to three shifts. The workshop manager revealed that European and American customers have offered to pay in full upfront, but the company prioritizes domestic orders, particularly for 28 nanometers lithography equipment. China's independently developed 28 nanometer lithography machine completed three months of testing at a semiconductor factory in the Yangtze River Delta. The test report showed that the equipment operated continuously for 2,000 hours without any problems. The domestically produced neodymium iron boron magnets used in the machine achieved a purity of 99.99%. Japan's Ministry of Economy, Trade and Industry is attempting to promote rare earth cooperation projects with Mongolia, but transportation routes require passage through Russian or Chinese airspace, resulting in logistics costs 35% higher than direct imports and significant geopolitical influences. South Korea's Samsung Electronics sent a team of executives to Inner Mongolia for frequent visits. Data from the Baotu Rare Earth Exchange shows that trading volume for unpopular rare earth elements such as gadolinium and yttrium has recently surged 400% year-on-year, 
while outflows of items on the export control list have remained zero. ASML's engineering team tried 17 alternative solutions. The one that came closest to success involved using American magnets paired with a German stabilization system. However, test data showed that positioning accuracy was still three orders of magnitude lower than that of the Chinese material solution. A British research institute announced the development of a new rare earth recycling technology but its industrialized plant will not be operational until 2027, and the processing cost is three times that of direct procurement, making it unlikely to resolve the current crisis. The China Rare Earth Industry Association has released new industry standards requiring all exported products to be embedded with traceability chips, implementing full monitoring of unauthorized re-exports, and closing loopholes for transshipment through third countries. Malaysian semiconductor packaging plants are beginning to feel the ripple effects. Due to delays in the delivery of lithography equipment, the installation of new chip packaging lines has been halted, and some already delivered equipment is being stored outdoors at the construction site. Taiwan Science and Technology Department held a closed-door meeting to discuss countermeasures. Business representatives attending the meeting reported that automotive chip production lines were the first to be affected, with delivery times for some automotive MCUs extending from 26 weeks to 52 weeks. Russia has proposed building a rare earth transport corridor through Kazakhstan, but the project requires Chinese participation in infrastructure development. It is still in the preliminary stages of engagement and faces challenges with winter operations in temperatures as low as minus 40 degrees Celsius. The Belgian Microelectronics Research Center has suspended some R&D projects. The construction schedule for its 2 nanometer chip pilot line originally scheduled for commissioning in 2026, has been adjusted due to uncertainty surrounding the delivery of EUV equipment. The General Administration of Customs of China has updated the export coding system for rare earth products. The new system conducts molecular level composition analysis on each batch of goods and can accurately identify controlled rare earth items that are illegally exported under the name of alloy materials.